Hello and welcome back. In the last video, we introduced you all to uh, Regex, a very powerful module or library, um, third-party module or library for Python that allows you to really interact with text in a way native tools of Python don't let you. In this video, I want to really kind of start doing something new. I want to start bringing in more complex uh, code that I've actually written for projects I am currently working on to show you how these modules and libraries can be actually used to perform very uh, complex, complex tasks in a very simple framework. So what I'm going to be working with uh, throughout this video and a couple other times throughout this uh, lecture series is a project in which I am kind of, it, the big project is creating a neural network that can analyze and recognize uh, scriptural references in Latin in early medieval texts. Uh, but in order to do that, one of the most important things I had to do was collate enough data to do that. And one of the ways in which I needed to collate the data was to collate the entire Bible, uh, the entire Vulgate Bible, which is in Latin, and to collate it and store it in my programs, what I'm calling the brain of the program, uh, as a bunch of different separate neurons. So in order to do that, I was able to find online for free this um, public domain text file. And it's a text file of every single uh, verse of the Bible, uh, the Vulgate Bible. And what I needed to do when I got this data was extract what I needed from it so that I could store each item individually, each piece of data individually. When I got it, it's just as you see it, a long, a long text file that follows a very simple pattern. It has the book, the chapter, the verse, number, and then the actual verse itself. So from a programming point of view, when you want to extract data, what you really need to do is identify patterns, uh, patterns that you can replicate through iterations, through loops. And the pattern I noticed when I first looked at this, as you probably do as well, is that book is separated from chapter by this downward stroke. And then the same thing happens for a uh, chapter being separated by the verse number. And the same thing happens for the verse number being separated by uh, the actual verse, Gen 1 1 being in Principio Creavi Deus Caelum Eterum. Uh, so, one of the things I needed to do was to figure out how to take that pattern and ex use it to extract bits of information, bits of data from the text file. So what I'm going to be working with here in this video is not all 35,811 lines of that text file, but just the first 31 lines, which is the first book of Genesis. So what I wanted to do when I was uh, writing this program, you can see the full script over here. I've kind of grayed out most of it um, right now just because I'm only working with um, these first 31 lines. I'm going to go through it bit by bit. So what I've done right here is I've created a list of all the different books of the Bible that we see here. So all the different ways in which this could possibly come up. This is going to be more relevant later on. So the first thing I needed to do was to identify the number of lines of this text file so that I could iterate over it the correct number of times. And so what I did was I just simply opened it up and I read it and I had to go through and read every single line and adjust this counter up here to actually give me the total number of lines. There's other ways to do that. This is just the way I opted to do it. So then what I do is I simply print off the number of lines. This is just to troubleshoot it, but we really don't need that. So let's go ahead and delete it. And we actually don't need that either, but we're going to go ahead and leave it for right now anyway. So the main crux of what we're going to talk about in this video is this bit of code right here which, in case you haven't noticed, relies substantially on regular expressions, regex. And the reason why is because I'm able to use regex to identify these patterns and account for them, and most importantly, account for variants. So when I first started talking about this, I mentioned that this file follows a very simple pattern. Book, chapter, verse. So the first thing I needed to extract from this text file for each line was the actual book. So in order to do that, I told it that the book is actually going to be the first three instances of a letter of being either capital or lowercase. 
And let me zoom in real fast. That's what this command in regex means. Lowercase a dash z, uppercase a dash z means it's going to be uh, any of the any letter, so a to z, uppercase or lowercase. And it's going to put those in brackets. That's going to delineate that as a succinct thing in and of itself. And it's going to have those instances where they occur three times, which means it's going to look for three letters back to back to back that are either uppercase or lowercase. And now I have a downward slash. What this downward slash means in regex expressions is that that's going to say essentially or. So either it's going to be an occurrence of uh, three letters, uppercase or lowercase, or it's going to be the occurrence of uppercase or lowercase, two instances of that, followed immediately by a number, one number, zero to nine. Now you might be asking yourself, why? Why has he done that? Genesis only has three letters. That's correct. But I wanted to iterate across the entire text file. And if you look at all the books, you'll notice up here in this list that sometimes um, a book can have two letters and a number, such as Sam 1 and Sam 2, Kings 1 and Kings 2, etc. So in order to account for that variance, I used this very important and very powerful um, method and uh, expression in uh, regex that allows me to account for that variance. So again, it's either going to be an occurrence of the first three letters, or it's going to be an occurrence of uh, two letters followed by a number. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to have it do that each time in comma in lines i. So each time it iterates through this, it's going to do that in the corresponding line. So that's how you extract the book. Now the way in which I've extracted the chapter is going to be the first occurrence of a um, the first occurrence of a, uh, a single digit by itself. Now this can be one or two. In fact, later on it's going to be one or two as you get to larger books. But I've just left this as a single digit for right now because I'm only dealing with a single chapter. However, when I get to verses, I'm dealing with something a little bit different. So the object verse is gonna use the regex find all, and it's gonna look for an occurrence of either a single digit or two digits and it's going to grab the second occurrence of that, which is going to be our, uh, our verse every single time. So that's how I was able to actually extract the verse. The, second, the last thing I needed to do, however, was extract the actual verse. And this is what the third is here. This is the actual verse. And the actual verse is going to be um, essentially... It's going to be the, the first occurrence of, um, of this specific string as well. So the first instance in which we start getting characters by, uh, letters by themselves after a downward slash. And what I've done here is I've, uh, I want it to recognize the downward slash, so I've commented it out essentially by do, using that backslash to let it know that this is not an or statement, but rather an actual uh, character that appears. And what this is going to do is it's going to grab the string of characters that it come after this. So anything that comes after that is going to be my actual uh, line. And what that's going to do is it's going to create uh, essentially four different objects. It's going to create a book object, a chapter object, a verse object, and then an actual verse, the words object. And what that allows me to do is it allows me to troubleshoot it before I proceed forward and identify all these different objects. And when I print out the output, we see all the different verses in that entire thing outputted correctly. So I'm just going to copy and paste this. So what we see happening here is it was able to extract in the output, and it does this for all 31 verses, and you saw how quickly it did it. For every single verse, it was able to grab for me this variable, this or this object, this object, this object, and that object. And I was able to create a new string using all of those objects, which we see right here with F commands. It's going to print off the first occurrence of book, which is always going to be the GEN in this case. And then it's going to do a colon, and then it's going to do 
the chapter, which is the first occurrence of a single digit, as we see here. And then it's going to do the actual verse, and it's going to tell me that this is Genesis 1.1. Now you might be asking yourself, why is it important to extract all of that data? Well, here's the reason why. Because what the rest of this script is going to do is it's going to go through and it's actually going to read the text file and start modifying it based on what I would like to see outputted. So one of the things I wanted to see happen, let me just run it, is I wanted it to be formatted. And in case you didn't catch that, let me go back and, and redo this for you. What I wanted it to be formatted as, I wanted it to format everything so that each book received a hanging zero if it was um, the first instance of it. And then what I wanted it to have was a zero here if it was going to be a verse, in a, a single digit verse, and a zero here if it was going to be a single digit uh, chapter, or vice versa, sorry. Uh, and the reason why I wanted that is because what I'm going to do in a later video, and I've already shown this in another YouTube video, so I'm just kind of rehashing it for this lecture series, is that I wanted to take all of this data and create individual XML files. And those individual XML files needed to have a hanging zero uh, for Genesis because I wanted everything in the XML folder to be organized the way in which it's organized in scripture. So Genesis wouldn't be located alphabetically be in the G's, it'd be located in the first position with a zero one. So in order to do that, in order to actually manipulate the data that way, I needed to format my data so that it would actually match the proper format in which I wanted to handle it. And I cannot stress this enough for any DH project, whether you're working in Python or outside of Python, or if you're just dealing with third-party software, consistency in your data is key. And you need to come up with a, a scheme, a schema for your data management very early on in your project so that you can be consistent throughout the remainder of it. It'll eliminate a lot of headaches, it'll keep you a lot happier. But this is one of the ways in which regex is quite powerful. And if you notice, beyond that, all I've done is I've got a series of if expressions that are going to say if the chapter is greater than zero, um, then it should do uh, this series of, of statements. In other words, it should add a hanging zero there. And the same thing is happening here with the verse, and we keep on going down, and it'll add hanging zeros in, but these are just simple replace functions in the string. The real power, however, came in this bit of code here in which I used regex to actually find and identify not just all occurrences of a book chapter and a verse, but all account for variance between them, both with regards to single digits and double digits. And that's the power of regex. It, was, it allowed me to do that. If I did not have regex, I would not have been able to do that very easily. It would have been much more complex, much more cumbersome. But once I had the data, all I had to do then was simply write a series of if expressions to open up this file, read it, and then uh, then simply go through and replace that line with the format that I want it to. So let's just look at this in real time real fast. I'm going to go through and change that, clear that off, and I'm going to run this program one more time. And you'll notice that I've just made a quick correction. I have changed this from uh, greater than zero to less than 10 to account for that variance. Um, that was a simple mistake I made a second ago. But we're going to run it. And we're going to see now that it's actually formatted everything the exact way we want it. Uh, single digits receive a hanging zero, and double digits do not. So that's the power of regex, and that's how we can kind of do really complex things very, very quickly using the regex, regex module or library in a real project to organize and structure our data in a very specific manner. Thank you for listening.